I'm honestly really scared <laughs> to show you this. What? Ard came in and said, turn on your phone. I don't know how I will react. I don't know if I wanted to show you yet or like, just like, keep it to myself for a while. What? Because I don't know if the same thing that happened before will happen again. Is there actually a line on there? Yeah, it's so faint, but it's right there. Are you serious? I'm serious, Branson. Dang, that's crazy. Oh yeah, I guess. Are you mad? I'm not mad, no. I promise. I promise. I was so scared to tell you. I'm not mad. But we have people over, I promise. If it isn't actually true, then I'm happy. Really? Yeah. Really? I promise, I promise. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. That's that's future our problem. Okay, you better go hide that before we get the here because <laughs> We got interrupted. <laughs> we did. Two hours later. Sorry, I didn't know how to tell you. <laughs> I was like if it doesn't stick, then what's the point of telling you right now? I'll just wait till after. But then I was like, I don't know if I can do it alone, <laughs> you know? And yeah. also with the thought of like, uh, you really want to wait another year, I was like killing me inside, like, <laughs> like. I did, but I'm not mad or anything about it. How are you feeling though? <laughs> I'm excited about it if it does stick. Really? Yeah. Are you gonna be heartbroken if it doesn't? Probably. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But I was like, okay, if I am, then I'm gonna have to get like vitamins and I'm gonna have to get, um, I think I have like two tests left. So I was like, I'm gonna have to buy more. And you see everything I buy. So I'm like, well, there's no way of like hide keeping it from you if I buy yeah, stuff. That's true. I'm actually known for two days. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I tested two days ago because it was six days before my period was supposed to start and I was like, hmm, that's when I tested for Neymar. So I was like, I'll just test again. Cause yeah. usually I test every month cause we're not trying to have one. So I'm like, okay, I'm just good. To be sure. yeah, yeah, okay. I'm good. Cause sometimes my period's late. So I'm like, oh crap. So the faintest, like the faintest line, I had to like hold it at an angle and I was like, <laughs> I think I see a line. So I've been testing for, <laughs> I tested yesterday and I tested today this morning and then um when i showed you like an hour after mm -hmm. so i was like thank you for that whole hour like okay it de it's definitely there like i can definitely see it compared to how it was this morning so it means it's like actually going so far yeah but it's still really faint compared to how neymar's was at that time so i don't know we'll see yeah anyway yeah i was scared to tell you <laughs> i'm sorry and also i asked you today <laughs> i was like what if what if we have one next? I was kind of suspicious about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, I was like, well, if he, like, guesses right now, like, I'll open up and say it. But he didn't, like, ask any further questions. I was like, okay. But yeah, I was like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I was being serious, but you took it as me just like, <laughs> you better not be. I was like, I'm not actually, like, I'm not mad about it or anything like that, so. You're gonna have to keep this these videos on private for a while. Put <laughs> in a different folder for the next couple months. Cause before I was thinking of keeping it, I told you, as long as possible, not telling anybody. Yeah. And just us two. But now I'm like, Christmas? It would be cute as like a Christmas present. Yeah. And I'm getting so excited, but I don't wanna get excited because I don't wanna. Yeah, just yeah. Just <sighs> see what happens. Yeah, it's still like Maybe three weeks. Which would put it, what, then July, beginning of August? It would put it close to my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we so we'd have. Neymar, our anniversary, and then this one will come the day before your birthday, and then your birthday. <laughs> or it could come like weeks early and come on our anniversary. <laughs> So what you're saying really is, is we're not doing anything again for our anniversary. <laughs> for the fourth year in a row. Yes. <laughs> we're just never doing anything for our anniversary. We'll do something for our 10th, maybe. <laughs> I'm telling you, our 10th anniversary is going to be our writing our vows. 
<laughs> so yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's getting more dark. Mm -hmm. okay. That's crazy. Definitely more to find now. Yeah, you can actually see it. Yeah. Last time you questioned me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but you can definitely see it. But did you actually that's see it last time, or did you just? No, I saw it once. I actually was start looking. But that's crazy. How do you feel about it? I am scared and excited. Why are you scared? Because I don't. I don't want another C-section. If I have it, I guess I have it. Pain to be done. <laughs> Come to the hospital with us. <laughs> no, he's not. Put him in the corner of the hospital room. Anyway, I don't want another C-section, but if I need it, I'll have it. But I am scared for the recovery of that. I'm not necessarily scared for the surgery. I'm scared for what comes after. <laughs> but you'll know what to expect this time. Yeah, I and really how to hope. Do it differently. I do hope that I get the same anesthesiologist though. Yeah, he was really good. He was amazing. He changed he really everything, good. the whole experience for me. If he wasn't there, it would have been something else. Anyway, I'm excited and scared and still a little bit worried because it's not it doing it very fast. It's just, it's slightly going darker, but it's not doing it as fast. Yeah, but it's actually going darker now. When you told me what it was like a week ago. No, it was only a couple days ago. But it was going... It went, went down for one day and then it went back up to what it was before and then just stayed like that for another couple days. Okay. And now it's a little bit darker. So we'll keep you updated in like three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see. And I'm still feeling a little bit nauseous here and there. My hands are covered in cuts. From the punching from bags. Cats and boxing and... Dryness from the cold weather for me. <clears throat> Look like an old lady. <laughs> No, I have old lady fingers. Old lady fingers? I do. He has girl fingers. I have guy fingers. Mine are like fat and short and yours are tall and skinny. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I'm jealous of your nails. I want his nails. And his eyelashes. Why do men get like this really one, great eyelashes? This I- <laughs> It's still there. It's still there. <laughs> okay, that's the update. <laughs> Okay, so we've had a scare, right? <laughs> because I've been testing like every day to see like the line not fading because that's what happened with the two chemical pregnancies. So I'm like scared that that's gonna happen again. And I started spotting and I saw that the line started going down and I just called the people. Yeah. And they said that, or the nurse that talked to me <laughs> said that I should go in before I uh, make an appointment to get the hormones that I should go in, get the blood work done. I could walk in today or tomorrow, but it has to be before like two. So I'd either have to go walk in today and then two days later walk in again so they can test those things out. Cause she said spotting isn't like unusual and that I shouldn't trust those tests too much. But like, it's the same thing that happened last time. So like- Did you say that? I did say that, but she was like, still, I would suggest you come in and get the blood work done first. And then if we see that it is, then we can schedule the appointment to get my hormones checked. But the problem is today I have an appointment at 1.30 to get- Yeah, I'll have to do it tomorrow. To look at, yeah, <laughs> my moles and everything. So yeah, walk in tomorrow. And I don't know, maybe by that point, I'd already have my period if it is. Yeah. So. We'll see. I guess we'll see. I'm like shaking. Yeah, you can tell on the camera. <laughs> We're gonna be using the turning off our location a lot for the next little while. Probably, huh? <laughs> you wanna keep it a secret from people, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people that have our location, like on our phones and stuff like that. And look at it on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared, but like I've already half accepted it, so. Like the first time that we went through this, it was really, really hard. So hard. And we went through it again. And so at that point, we didn't, didn't even know if we could have kids. But now that we have Neymar, like it's still like a scary thing, but we've been through it. We know what to expect and what not to expect and stuff like that. And so I didn't need any type of different. anything to get pregnant with him, so. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so this morning I woke up and I was bleeding a lot more than just spotting. So I'm pretty sure it is a chemical pregnancy, but we're still coming to do the blood test just so that they have it in their like system, system that it is. And maybe they'll actually like help me figure out what's wrong with my hormones. 
I just realized that I have to get poked with a needle again. Remember last time when I was actually pregnant and they had to get the blood to do all the tests and stuff? And then like, my blood stopped flowing into the thing. Oh, yeah. That was scary. <laughs> they took so many. That was scary. Okay, that's done. And they said to come back on Friday, two days from now. And they'll probably call me tomorrow. And I can call in if they don't. I don't know if you're listening. I went to get up because they called your name and you were just gone. Like you didn't even wait for it. I, I know, like, I'm sorry. It's because she started, walking, she just started like, walking away. Where do I go? So I heard her voice. So I just had to like follow the halls until I found you guys. I was like. I'm sorry, she just started walking away. So I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway, she said I can call in or they're they'll probably call me depending on the first one they'll either have me come back on friday or not i think that's what's gonna happen because honestly i'm not like bleeding so so much but i am bleeding i don't have any cramps but i haven't had any cramps for my period for, for the past couple of periods i've had so i don't know anyway let's go get lunch you just wake up look what i found at the store stop <gasps> Slinky Dog and Mr. Potato Head. Hey, don't we already have Mr. Potato Head? I don't know. Do we? Yeah, you got him for a video. Oh, we do, huh? Well, we have another one. Cute. Are we giving it to him right now? That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. Because <laughs> who knows if he'll still be into Toy Story when Christmas comes around. But okay, you can go get him. I'll get him out real quick. Neymar has been obsessed with Toy Story. And so I've been looking for toys from Toy Story for a while now. And today was the first time I actually found them. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get it. I first saw Slinky Dog and then I was walking around and then I saw Woody and Buzz. I'm like, oh, I gotta get that one too. And then I turned and saw Rex and I was like, oh, I got to get that one too. They were on like in four different spots. And then I saw the Mr. Potato Heads. So I'm like, okay, I guess I have to get all of them. So I'm gonna surprise him. Thank you. Are you ready for this? Anymore. What's over there? Anymore. What? Buzz. Buzz. Whoa. Whoa. What are they? Who's that? Woody and Buzz? <laughs> <gasps> Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> it's a slinky dog. Wait, whoa, whoa. Arr. Just Look at the buzz. Look at the buzz. Look at the buzz. Look at the buzz. Is it what the buzz? They didn't fly. Go. <laughs> okay, so this morning I got a call from the OBGYN to meet if I could come back in so they can take another sample because I never went back because I started bleeding so I just like I just assumed that it didn't even matter at that point <laughs> but I guess they still want me to come back in anyway so here we are I must be getting older some of this is so stupid so I woke up this morning and she was playing with Neymar and then all of a sudden there was like I don't know if it was a vein or what pinched in my back not a vein a uh, nerve nerve yeah and it's been driving me crazy all day because I haven't been able to get, get it over with. It can't. Anyway, it still hurts. But anyway, I was sitting on the computer and I sneezed and felt something pop in my shoulder. And now I can't move like my neck or my head or my back or anything. Since you hurts. sneezed? Yeah. Like, I can get to a, a place where it's like, it does, like right here is okay. Okay. I'm going to get something to warm your neck up. <laughs> And you're gonna. I told him this morning to take freaking ibuprofen to help him out, but he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't take it. Okay, I got the call. And she said that the doctor that looked at it said that it was rising how it should be. So they said that I should get an appointment done anyway. And so December 4th. We don't have anything that week, right? I thought you sent it, or you said it for the, like the 22nd or something, or the... So I had November 29th as an appointment with another doctor, but that was not for like a pregnancy appointment. That was just to like meet up with her and like talk. I might call in later and like cancel the other one since we have that one now. Okay. But anyway, she did say that to just keep 
taking the home ones just to be sure if it does go down then to like just call and cancel the other appointment but until then so we already told everybody that it, it wasn't it wasn't so now they're all expecting it was so if it actually does stick they're gonna be even more surprised <laughs> yeah. we're gonna be even more surprised i'm like yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You're not supposed to have periods when you're pregnant. I know I've heard that people do bleed while they're pregnant, but like, it was the way my periods are, so it was weird. What if we're having twins? We're not having twins. <laughs> That's crazy. If it did stick, I'm gonna be very, like... Shocked. Yes. I don't like this feeling because now I'm like hopeful. Yeah. Like what if we go in there and it's just like, oh, your body didn't clean out the way it should have. So you're, it still thought that you were pregnant. I don't know. I hate this waiting waiting game. It's the worst. We literally told everybody now that it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to get it out of my chest. It was too much for me to handle. What do you think? I don't know. It's interesting. We don't get normal pregnancies like other people do. I have all these weird, crazy stuff that happens i guess it's different for everyone but it is different for everyone yeah it is the weekend or the week that we're up with mars family and uh we're visiting the emergency room because mars not feeling good uh we'll, we'll get more into it when we when i get in but not how we planned on uh, spending our thanksgiving week So we're in, the doctor's not in yet. You're still in pain, right? I didn't haven't even said what's going on. I just said the word that you are. Oh, well, we're back. <laughs> I don't think we've ever been to the ER, but we've kind of explained how we've gone to get my blood drawn and everything. Last time we went there, I said I called and they said that it was looking like everything was fine. So they set up an appointment for us. And that's like the first week of December but we're still in the middle of November. And like a couple hours ago, I just started having like really bad pain on my right side. And from obviously everything on the internet, told you you're gonna die, right? Well, I just said it could possibly be an ectopic pregnancy or I've also been talking to my mom and she said that it could be that I didn't. So I've had my period. So maybe I just didn't like- Didn't flush out fully. Yeah, which I've also like, thought about yeah this is more just peace of mind than anything because if it is something exactly. wrong i don't want it i don't want it, like my tube to burst yeah it, it could be it, it could be bad if it is ectopic so okay so they got tests done they got an iv in mars arm yeah they're just going through all the tests and everything to see what information they can find with it so ultrasound yeah they're getting they're getting the ultrasound ready so but so far it's like the, the nurses and everything, they've been awesome. The Doctors been nurse. awesome, so. They did say that it might be too early to even detect. So the actual doctor said that she just warned us that it could be an ectopic pregnancy. Yeah. And so she just said it still might be too early to even like, you know where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of unanswered questions that are hopefully will be answered here soon. Luckily, it's not too late. It's only like 11. I know. So I, when I first said it, I was like, we were getting ready to sleep actually. Yeah, cause we're supposed to be up early tomorrow for family stuff, so. I don't know, my mind forgot that we were gonna go to sleep early. So I was like, crap, we're gonna have to go to the ER at 2 a.m. Cause that's when we usually go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah. But then I realized, wait, it's so early. Yep, it is really early, so that's nice. I was tired, but you just dropped the remote. Oh no. Ready to go. Anyway, we'll update you guys when we have an update. Okay, I just got poked for the 17th time this week. Just kidding. Uh, this is what, our fourth time going to get my blood drawn? Did we explain everything after the ER? So my hcg wasn't rising how it should be rising and they didn't see anything so they wanted me to come in again today monday because it was friday to get another blood test done and they gave me this <laughs> doctor as a referral to go and like have him draw it but then he was on vacation till the 27th so and then they had nobody else to do it so i had to go to a different place to get it drawn yep. anyway I think they said they would let me know later today or tomorrow morning. And then depending on if it's still going up, 
then maybe another ultrasound in a week. If not, then it was just uh, an early miscarriage, but like a really slow one because I've been bleeding for weeks now. I mean, if it's not a viable pregnancy, that'd be the best outcome where it's just like gonna get go away on its own. Anyway, that's the story of how I've lost a lot of blood this week. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I have a question. Mm. Since we're gonna go to the doctor tomorrow, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think they're gonna find anything in my uterus? <laughs> Honestly, I have no clue at this point. I've seen different videos of other moms talking about having ectopic pregnancies, and they sound similar to what was happening to me right now, where they go in and then they didn't find anything in the, they didn't find a sac or anything in the uterus, but the HCG levels were still going up. Although my levels are a lot higher than what their levels were. Like they started off very, 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 like very faint. All I know is it doesn't make any sense, but hopefully we can actually get some answers tomorrow. What is he doing now? Yeah, as long as they can tell me, yes, it's an ectopic pregnancy. Yes, it's gonna be terrible and sad, but we'll know what to do from then instead of just sitting in the unknown. That's the worst part. So I have no idea if I'm gonna put this on the vlog, but I just wanted to record it to, I don't know, for my future self or my kids or somebody just to have my feelings recorded about this part of my life, I guess. Tomorrow we're gonna go get my second ultrasound done. That is gonna confirm whether it's a chemical, not a chemical pregnancy, man. I keep that word just, it's stuck in my brain. <laughs> An ectopic pregnancy, which I've felt like it is an ectopic pregnancy since I started bleeding and my pregnancy tests never went fainter and my HCG blood tests kept going up in like a weird pattern. It wasn't like doubling every 48 hours like it should. It just slowly kept going up and I started having pain and my bleeding doesn't stop. I'm still bleeding. I've been bleeding for 20 days now, which sucks. <laughs> because for those who have had, who have had miscarriages or just the worst thing is thinking you're pregnant and then you go to the bathroom and you see blood. That's just First of all, it's a sign that something could be wrong, you know, maybe nothing's wrong. But if it is, and you know you miscarried, every time you go to the bathroom, you're reminded of it. And it's just, it's one thing to go through it, but to be reminded of it every time you go to the bathroom, it just sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So for me, for this, I know that I'm still pregnant because my blood tests keep coming, saying that my HCG is going up. But I'm bleeding and bleeding and I'm in pain. And when we went to do the first ultrasound at around six weeks, they didn't see a sac in my uterus, which is not normal. And they keep saying that maybe I implanted later than normal, but I know I didn't because I tested positive six days before my period was supposed to be due. There is no way that I ovulated or implanted later, like it just maybe a day or two, but that doesn't really make a difference when it comes to seeing a sack at six weeks or not. <laughs> they didn't see anything wrong with my tubes or my ovaries either though. So they didn't know where the pain, why I was having pain. So they recommended that I go seven to 10 days and get another ultrasound done. So I called in after Thanksgiving to make another appointment and the earliest that they had was the 30th of November and that would be like 14, 15 days after. The pain just is like all day. I'm in pain all day and it's not like horrible. Like it's bearable. I can take Tylenol and I'm fine, but it's just constant now. It's not like on and off really. So I'm worried that I'm running out of time if it is an ectopic pregnancy. So I called in and I talked to a nurse and I told her everything that's happening and they were able to get me in for tomorrow. So I'm gonna go get checked out tomorrow. I'm so scared because I don't want anything to 
you know, rupture or make future pregnancies more difficult for me. They're already, obviously, already as difficult as it is. This is my fourth pregnancy and I've only had one baby. And some people don't even consider chemical pregnancies pregnancies, but they still are, you know? Technically, they still are. <sighs> and they're still counted as a pregnancy when doctors ask you how many pregnancies have you had. Those still count. But anyway, um, the other day I was scrolling through TikTok and I was having a hard time, you know, just thinking why... Why am I one of those women that have a hard time getting pregnant and keeping a pregnancy? Like, why did that have to be me? And this video came up, America's Got Talent. It was this girl that was gonna sing and I just, I scrolled and something told me to go back. And I was like, maybe she's a good singer. And I listened to it and she was a really good singer actually, but something she said after she finished singing was, you can't wait until life isn't hard anymore to decide to be happy. She said that because she's going, she was going through cancer, like treatment, she had cancer. And she just seemed like she was actually, you know, like happy with her life. She was good and she was so pretty too, but she got the golden buzzer <laughs> and she passed away. I don't know if it was days or weeks after that. She went by the name Nightbird. That's all I remember. But anyway, that, really like stuck out to me or stood out to me because usually i tend to be more on the negative side of things and just think that my life is so hard sometimes but really it's not it's not the hard and even if it is hard at times like i can still choose to be happy in the hard times i don't have to be sad i don't have to be depressed because my life isn't going how i want it to go I can still choose to be happy, just like I can choose to be happy now. It's hard, but I can choose to be happy. I'm just letting myself feel all the feelings right now, but I'm okay. And I'm grateful that I have Neymar. And really, anytime that I'm struggling with it, if I look over at him and I just see his pretty face and how old he's getting and how, how old, how big <laughs> he's getting <laughs> and how funny he is and how crazy and how much he's starting to talk now just it makes it all better and sometimes I cry in front of him because I am sad and he comes and he gives me the big socks that fixes everything <laughs> if you leave with anything from this whole <laughs> feelings, talk, spiel, whatever it's that don't wait for your life to not be hard anymore to choose to be happy. Just choose to be happy anyway, because life's short and <sighs> there's no point in being sad. I think it's better to enjoy your life no matter what. How lucky are we to be able to experience all these feelings, you know? We're still here. We're experiencing things. We're lucky. Well, we're at the doctor once again and we just got an ultrasound and they still can't find anything other than the bleeding. And they said we'll probably have to go to the ER again and get a camera put in Mara's belly button. That's terrifying. Like, I already knew that there wasn't going to be a pregnancy in there. Yeah. Or in my uterus, I guess. But I was hoping that they'd be able to find where it is at this point. That's the update. On I'm, like, in shock. Like, I want to cry, but also... I already cried last night. You can tell. Look at my eyelids. It's a freaking soul. <laughs> I don't want a camera. Shut it's the only way to fix it though. I know. I was hoping I'd just get a shot in my butt. I'm sorry. But you didn't think you were gonna go to the ER twice this month? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Neither did I. Twice this year. I don't think I've ever been to the ER for myself. Like I've been to take other people, mm. but not me. This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> Well, so we got to the ER. Um, they said that it, there is blood in the ovaries, and which means there's a possibility that- In my pelvic area. In the pelvic area, yeah. In the mass in my ovary, or by my ovary. Which means there's a possibility that it ruptured or could rupture soon, which is not good. So they're taking her in for surgery here in a couple minutes and seeing what they can do. 
I don't want them to take my tube. Yeah, but if that's the only way to keep you healthy. <laughs> Seriously. If that's the only way to keep you healthy, then that's the only way. Please don't have it be removed. I would be so pissed. Because we've already come once, they could have taken, gotten rid of it in time. Yeah. But they made me wait. They were gonna make me wait even more. Oh, it's just this and something. You know your body's not okay. You know your body's not okay. Yeah. I'm back. It's me. Do you want to explain it? Do you want me to explain it? You probably explain it better. I'm still kind of loopy. <laughs> so, she got out of surgery about an hour ago. But they have to let her get off the amnesia and stuff like that. But so there anesthesia, was... you mean? Amnesia is like I lost. Anesthesia, yeah. I did okay. lose. I honestly only remember them taking him into the OR. I saw white stuff. Got like tape on my face. They took me in and they're like, okay, I just need you to like jump onto the other, other bed. Other bed. Mm -hmm. Don't remember anything after that. I don't know if they even told me when the medicine was gonna come in because. He said he would tell me. I don't remember it. He probably did tell you, but you're just out of already. He said I might remember him telling me to open my mouth to take the breathing tube out of my... I don't remember it. I remember I woke up in that other room and they said my name and I like opened my eyes. And that's it. That's all I remember. Jeez, I am like so lightheaded. <laughs> so the pregnancy was in the tube and because of that there was a lot of bleeding in the tube and there wasn't anything they could do to save the tube because of how much blood was in there. So they had to remove it. We were hoping that wasn't the case, but it just wasn't. And she also had a hernia that they fixed as well. And they're like, um, this is a hernia. So they fixed that too. Yeah, it could have been a lot of a lot worse because if it did, if it had ruptured, it becomes a life and death situation. For how many topic pregnancies there are, I feel like they should know better. Like I had literally all the signs and they were still pushing me off. I wasn't even supposed to go in today. I had to like call in and be like, can you get me in sooner? Like you literally want me to go in, in like two or three days. Yeah. Like I just need to go in. Like I already knew something was not right. So frustrating. I do have shoulder pain, holy cow. The doctor was explaining what was gonna happen. You might feel some shoulder pain afterwards more than the pain of the surgery or whatever. Mm, from the CO2 or whatever? Yeah. So everything went okay, other than they had to take the tube. It's so sad. Yeah, but it could have been a lot worse, so. I'm trying to stay positive with the whole thing and look at all the good things that- I know, I am, I am happy that I'm not dead. I just, I am mad that all my worries were just pushed aside. And like, I know it's because they were probably trying to be hopeful or whatever, but. Yeah. Like, I already knew. Like, you know, when you know, you know. I was also trying to be hopeful because you don't ever want to wish that on yourself or anyone, but. Laura's parents are coming down right now. Probably gonna stay with us for a couple days. <laughs> Guess I'll just try to read a lot of books. Yep. If my brain lets me. I've tried to read these like past couple of days, but ever since we went to the ER the first time, like my mind is just wasn't going, going, going. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't read. I'm glad we got answers and I'm glad we got it taken care of finally. Yeah. I am glad about that. I just, I'm scared that it's gonna be hard to get pregnant again or that this happens again in the other tube and then what now? Like, what do you do after that? Can you still get pregnant? I don't even know. What happens? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. Hopefully we won't have to worry about any of that. Just adopt? I do want four babies. Yeah. Only had one. I'm gonna be here for the next little while. And as soon as Mark can get up and go to the bathroom, they said, then... That I can go home. Yep. So, it's not gonna be an overnight. No, nope, thankfully. I don't wanna stay here. I got three, three new scars. One of them is just your belly button, pretty much. Yeah. Which is... Technically a scar. My belly button was already rough after the pregnancy. <laughs> well, no, you definitely have an Audi. No! <laughs> well, after a day of craziness, how are you feeling? I mean, I've gone through so many feelings. 
Yeah. My throat hurts because I had to put a tube down. A breathing tube, yep. I've gone through first scared. I was scared because he literally just said it. Like, you have an ectopic pregnancy. We're going to have to remove your tube. Like, yeah, out of nowhere. It was from the time that we got to the <laughs> hospital till operating. It was maybe 20 minutes. Everybody else, even the one that did the ultrasound, walked around those words. Like, eh, maybe, possibly, but still go to the ER. So I was like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. still go to the, to the ER and you might have surgery. You might have surgery. But going there, that doctor, like, like he was like, you're gonna have surgery, you're gonna get your tube removed. Yeah. That's it. There's a very small chance that you won't get it removed. Yeah. But So at that point I was like, okay. I had already known it was gonna be an ectopic pregnancy. I didn't know that I was gonna need surgery. <laughs> Yeah. I still was hoping that I could just have, have a shot because they said that they didn't see anything the first time I was hoping that maybe like it was small and it wasn't that big of a deal mm -hmm. So I thought maybe I, it was caught soon enough and it would have been caught soon enough the first time that I went to the ER I think so I thought I was just gonna get a shot. So that's what I was hoping for I still knew that surgery was a possibility, but I was like I'm not even gonna say it out loud because I don't want it to like come true or whatever. Anyway, so I was terrified. I was terrified about the C-section before because we wanted to have three more kids and sometimes you can only have three C-sections. And now I was only gonna have one tube and already a C-section. So it's like everything was working against me to get to where I want to be. Yeah, that was really scary and that was like, I'm shaking just thinking about it. I woke up because I accepted what was coming for me, like whatever. I mean, you can't do anything about it at that point. And they told me, yeah, we had to remove it. There was just too much blood or whatever. But I came in early enough that it didn't burst. So that was really good. And then I was mad because I knew it and I told them and they kept pushing me off to wait. And I was like, I already know what this is. I've told you and I'm pretty sure how they like talked about it. I'm pretty sure they knew too. Eh, I don't know. Maybe they were hoping it would just go away on its own too. Anyway, I was mad that because they didn't listen to me, we got to the point where I had to lose my tube. And I, maybe I would have had to lose it anyway at the start, but at least I would have been heard. You know, I don't know if that, if that makes any sense, but like I wasn't as upset at the fact that the baby wasn't going to make it because I had already mourned the baby when I thought it was a chemical pregnancy. Like you obviously still hope there's always hope, but I like, I don't know. So that part wasn't as big of a shock. And also the fact that we weren't planning on having this baby. Like it wasn't like Neymar where we like prayed and prayed and prayed and just, man, I didn't know I was gonna be scared for this though. <laughs> anyway. I was the least of your problems and I wasn't even upset or anything yeah. like Yeah, anyway. Um, my parents came and like I talked to them for a little bit and they made me feel better. Got a long rant out. Yeah, both of us, cause my mom was also a little bit upset that they, they don't listen yeah very well anymore because now there's more protocols or whatever things they have to follow questions they have to ask and in a way it makes sense for those that aren't like this that do end up resolving on their own or yeah or never thick topic or never bad situations it just was a slower pregnancy or whatever but still the fact that it could get there i feel like they should still should monitor it closer more closely than they did yeah anyway I recorded like kind of how I was feeling yesterday, last night, you mm -hmm. weren't there, but I kind of explained like the one girl that I watched that I told you that she said you can't wait till life isn't yeah. hard any anymore to be, to decide to be happy. And that's like literally playing over and over in my head. Even though they didn't listen to me at the start, it's still, you were just telling me how it's a good thing we had chemical pregnancies before because I knew how those were. Mm -hmm. And I knew this wasn't that and I've also had a good pregnancy So I knew how that was and that wasn't that either So like this was my only other option that I could like really see mm -hmm. a possibility <laughs> I'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> I've only eaten a sandwich today. Where was I? And then kind Trying of happy to, about yeah. it. Well, not happy, but I don't know the word It's not I'm happy this happened, but it's like I'm okay with it and I'm not gonna like be depressed about it or anything like with the c-section I went into this whole spiraled into depression yeah. for a while and obviously um, Pregnancy hormones had a lot to do with that too But now I'm looking at it way differently where I literally could have died twice now if we didn't have the advanced technology that we have now yep. The c-section he was breech. He was almost nine pounds. There's no way I could have pushed him out and then this if they didn't have the technology to like remove it or to see it, I would have bled out and died. 
twice now. Like, that's crazy. If I hadn't called again to pressure them into making another ultrasound. Yeah, so I've gone through all the... All the emotions. Yeah, all the... Is it grief? I don't know. Stages of grief. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I am grieving my tube and my baby. Yeah, it's true. So... I'm usually not a patient person. Like, the chemical pregnancies, I was very mad about a lot of things, but, like, even you last night, I was upset with things, but I don't know, today was kind of a, like a twist for me. Cause when we went in, they started talking about the things that could happen. Mm -hmm. One of those things, you know, look horrible. One of those things is this could be a life, could have been a life or death situation, even with advanced technology and stuff like that. If it did burst and it was bleeding enough, while I was sitting in the waiting room, that was like, they said it's gonna be half an hour to an hour, depending on- The what, situation was. Yeah, the situation. And it's 45 minutes in and I have no info. And it's coming up closer and closer to an hour. I think it did pass an hour and I was like, what is going on, you know? So in my head, I'm freaking out. And so when the doctor came out, he even like walked slow to me and I was oh like, are you freaking gosh. kidding me? I'm like- Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And then he made a joke about the music that was playing, but I was like, You're joking about music. She's not dead. Yeah. Good and then he's like, Here's your wife. And like, put down the pictures and stuff like that. And I was like, Okay. He was an interesting doctor, honestly. He was. <laughs> He, he wasn't bad. He got what he needed to get done, done, which is really good. Then afterward, when she was like in the coming out of anesthesia, yes, they had to take the tube and everything, and but it could have been a lot worse. There are men out there that this happens to their wife and they have to go home alone. It's like a wave of thank gratefulness, thankfulness. I don't know which one to use. Which like this whole time, I usually talk about God or anything because that's just, I don't know. But this whole time I've been like praying and all these things and I'm like, I'm literally in your hands. Like that's what I just kept saying. I was like, if I have to lose my tube, then okay, but make it so that it's not life or death. Like I just yeah. make it so that we see it before it gets to like a really bad situation. It was still not good, but- The best of the worst, I guess. Yeah. Then I like started thinking about everything else and like the chemical pregnancy, like every, I, I honestly believe that everything does happen for a reason, even if we don't know that reason. And now looking back, I'm like, okay. We knew what to yeah, expect. You knew, yeah, you knew what to expect for this one and it wasn't what you were expecting. So there was something else wrong. I don't know, the blessings in disguise, you could say. Yeah, my parents came over and I got to talk to them for a long time. Just us. So it's, maybe that, maybe was that, that was the whole reason. You <laughs> I, Danielle actually did text me. She was like, I know you've been trying to find ways to like talk to your parents more and spend time more with your family. And maybe this was like that blessing in disguise for them coming over. I know that's not the whole reason, but I do know that when we went to Thanksgiving, there was so much going on that I mm. couldn't spend a lot of time with them. But now I literally had like the best talks with them. And I got to say a lot of things that I've always wanted to say, but I was always too embarrassed to say, you know? I don't know, we were never the type of family that said, oh, I love you. Yeah. You guys say it all the time, and I say it all the time to you guys. But I don't always say it to my family. Like, I, but like actions speak louder than words. But still, like hearing it makes you feel good, you know? Yeah. And you want them to know that you do love them. I was able to say that without feeling like, I don't know, embarrassed or like I was making a moment with our family or whatever, we're so tough. Yeah, I was able to let them know that and how much I appreciated everything that they did for me growing up and how I never felt like they were bad parents or anything like that. And like, it kind of made my dad tear up a little bit. I kind of saw him when I said like, I, and like both of my parents kind of teared up because they were like, that was something that we wanted to like really do for you guys, like not. Yeah. We didn't want you guys to feel that and just have a good, as good of a childhood as you could have. I feel like that like lifted some like. <laughs> burden off your shoulders. Yeah, because I feel like they do, they do feel like they could have done a lot more for us when we were little. Yeah, which I think every parent feels that way. Of course, or anybody with anything, right? Something that I've been trying to work on really, really hard recently is just finding the good things in all the crap. Find the diamonds in the pile of poop. Every, I feel like a lot of people are focused on negative things these very, days. Very, very focused on negative, like... Social media is very negative right now. Mm -hmm. It has its good things, and like, yeah. I, I do love social... I mean, we're in, we're part of it. Our lives are social media. Yeah, like. but it does have a lot of bad things in it. So, this whole thing, Yes, it was a very long day and scary day and frustrating and all these different things. But at the same time, there was a lot 
of good that came out of it. Look for the nuggets of gold in your poop. <laughs> I need to get a shirt that says something like that now. <laughs> yep. Changing our channel, worth the good to... Worth the golden the, nuggets in your poop. Worth the golden nuggets in your poop. <laughs> this is gonna be a long video because it's a compilation of the last three weeks of our lives. Basically, he's okay. Sometimes he talks in his sleep. That's true. It's actually really funny. It is funny. <laughs> Even with crappy days that you get your tubes taken out of your body and have to go through ER and scare everybody in your life and possibly... I'm sorry. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, I was the one giving the, or telling the news to everyone. So I'm, I'm the one that scared everybody saying, hey, Mara's in surgery right now, so... It was good to have all those prayers though and all those good yeah. thoughts my way, I think. Yep. The whole message is look for the golden nuggets in your poop. Don't wait for life to not be hard anymore to decide to be happy. We'll end it here because this is going to be like a 40-50 minute video. But thank you guys for being part of it. If you're watching on the vlog, we're hopefully going to be doing more on the vlog here yeah. soon. We should probably put a trigger warning though. I know this is a topic that really like... It can be triggering for people, yeah. Yeah. So we'll be you guys, and we will talk to you soon. You are worth it, and... You are worth it, and find the nuggets in your poop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, I've been wanting to cut my hair for a really long time now, and I said that I would after we had our second child, but I feel like I'm not in control of anything right now, so I want to be in control of something, and... Cutting my hair. How short are you cutting it? Short. <laughs> Branson doesn't like it, but. <laughs> I'm cutting your hair next. Anyway, yeah, I'm excited. I'm sad but excited. <laughs>
No? Okay. Okay, so we just got done eating. Um, I don't know if I said this in there or not. I honestly can't remember. So we went to the, that store to get Neymar out a little bit. That pet store. We got done with it. We looked at all the animals and stuff like that. And then we walked down and to go see some other stores. As we were passing that place, um, we go there a lot with my parents and Neymar starts chanting, nah, 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 nah. I was like, what? And so I was like, okay, we'll, we'll go to the different places and see like, if he wants to come back or whatever. Then a few minutes later, we get done with the other shop and we were walking back and he points at it and goes, nah, nah, and hurries and starts running over there. I'm like, okay, we'll get some. It's, it's lunchtime, so. He wanted uh, Mexican food for lunch. And he told me straight up, no, nah, no, nah, that's, that's what I want. So anyway, we're gonna go get some stuff for Mara at Target, get her like a care package type thing. And then nah, that's, nah, nah, that's. And then we'll head back, but got a couple hours, just me and Neymar, huh, dude? Just me and Neymar. No, you have to push it, here, ready? Push it, go give it to mama. Me, mama. Yeah, go give it to mama. Me, me, mama. Look, go give it to mama. Say, Mama, this is for you. So this one's for you. You got me that, Neymar? Papa? Papa? Yep, Papa's. Papa? Soon, basket. <laughs> Thank you. You're gonna steal all the chips? <laughs> Tell mama that we saw the fishies and the lizards and the snakes. Were there doggies? And the wawows? There were wawows? No there baby ones. <laughs> nope. There was there one that was babies? playing with Neymar actually. There were baby ones? Yeah. Is there a baby one? No, the there's not a baby one in there. We sorry. could get a doggy. No, we don't need a dog right now. We got other things that are higher on the priority list. And you got a new cat this year, so. I could get a new dog. <laughs> Talk about it maybe next year. Fine. Thanks. Just a couple of them. 